Rebecca. Annie. Thomas. Annie. Annie. All right. Good evening, everyone. It's 630. So let's go ahead and get started. My name is Jennifer Flynn, and I am the principal here at Bishop Walsh. And welcome to Back to School Night for this school year. Our um, theme, Archdiocese Wide, is Be a Light for All to See. So that's the, um, the logo that you see in front of you right there. And as we do with all things, we are going to start with prayer. So we could all bow our heads in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, as we return to school, send your Holy Spirit as our guide and protector. Keep us safe and healthy. Help us to be in the right place at the right time to receive your grace. Help our students to learn and grow this school year. May the presence of your Spirit fill their hearts Bless everyone in the Bishop Walsh family and watch over us this school year. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now I want to introduce our president of the school, Mr. Joe Carter. As Mrs. Flynn said, my name is Joe Carter and I'm in my first year as the president of Bishop Walsh, and I have a few remarks to make. <clears throat> First of all, please understand that we had a great opening. Uh, it's been a really good week. Uh, the kids have done a great job wearing their masks and trying to social distance, but we keep reminding them of those two things. I also want to take this time to thank the entire staff for everything that they have done to get ready for the opening, uh, especially our principal, Mrs. Flynn, and the administrative staff. They have spent hours and hours getting ready for Monday. And I also want to thank you, the parents, for your cooperation. Um, you have taken the time and filled out your questionnaire every morning so that your student can or your son or daughter can come into school without any problems. <clears throat> My last comment is this. <clears throat> Please understand that this is something new for our teachers. Not the fact that we're distance learning, but we're distance learning with students in front of us. So that is not the easiest thing to do. Um, so please, uh, cut them a little slack, give them a chance to get ready and, and to get this ironed out. And I'm sure you will be very pleased with what they are going to do. Thank you. And, and I wanna reiterate what Mr. Carter said. You know, we really can't say thank you enough to our community, everyone here in our building, our maintenance staff, our teachers, our office staff. And, uh, you know, we are excited to be back and see all the kids, whether in person or virtual. We do have some new faces around here. And I want to introduce you to them virtually, of course. Our first grade teacher is now Raleigh Davis, and she's off to a wonderful start downstairs in elementary. Our new art teacher is Erica Fabrizio. Our new math teacher is Mrs. Tammy Talton. Our new physical education and elementary computer teacher is Stacy Wilson. Our new kindergarten aide is Lily Young. And we have two part-time middle and high school computer teachers. Michael Falter is our high school computer teacher and Lauren O'Rourke is our middle school computer teacher. And you'll also see Lauren around the building. She floats around and helps out wherever we need her and she's been wonderful. You'll also notice some people with different roles this year. Jill Danola, who has been 
a part of the Pratt program in the past is coming on full time with us as guidance counselor and continuing to work with Pratt students. Beth Latin, who is still teaching a little bit of math for us, is now our assistant principal. And then Dan Preet and Doc Edwards are now our co-athletic directors. Mrs. Giles, our school nurse, who is uh, trying to go viral on YouTube, you may have seen her, uh, her video of her singing her back to school song, um, has a few messages for you. She wants to remind you to please spend time on the symptom check questions in the daily wellness survey and to please keep your child home if they are ill. Especially if your child has a cough, Mrs. Giles needs a physician's explanation, for example, that they have allergies. Um, otherwise, it's considered a COVID-like symptom, and we want to be much safer than sorry. Please remember all the preventative strategies that we've put into place here, the mask wearing, the social distancing, etc., and carry them over at home and during your family gatherings, especially this weekend as we celebrate Labor Day. We really want to keep our BW bubble, that's going to be one of our, our words this year, as safe as possible. And we really need your help to do that because we really want to be here in the school building and we want to be teaching your children. And we want you to help us with that as much as you can. As far as reopening goes, like Mr. Carter said, it's been a very successful reopening. Our full plans are on the website. You've probably seen them already. The top thing that we can do is wear masks. And Ms. Latin's going to talk a little bit more about that. Beth? Hello, everyone. Um, so masks are really, you're gonna probably hear me call, be called the mask czar, but masks are really one of the only reasons we can reopen. Um, you need to be wearing your mask correctly above your nose, obviously covering your mouth. Um, I've had to give some students new masks. We have some extras in the, in the school um, because they go below their nose. Um, please, if you see your child in the morning pulling up their mask or their straps are too large, you can always take the mask if it's too big and twist the sides to make it a little smaller. Or we have small, we have masks for small children here that they can use for the, you know, we have uh, disposable ones and we, um, that we can give them for the day in order for you to get one that fits. Um, so it's really important, like I said, if, if I have to ask a student more than a few times to fix their mask because they're intentionally not wearing it correct, they're not gonna be allowed back in the building. That means you'll have to go virtual. Um, I don't think that people who are here want their children to go back to being virtual. So I really encourage you to tell your children to wear your masks, their masks correctly. Um, and um, so we don't have an issue. Uh, right. And along with the mask wearing is also the, the social distancing. The students here in the building have been doing a really good job about trying not to get too close. There's dots and marks all over the floors, all over outside on the sidewalk to help us do that. Um, so that's just something we want to keep on practicing. The school was sprayed last Thursday with the persistent protectant, the Envira Shield, and it went all over the school, minus those few places we did not want it sprayed, and it protected everything, and that's good for three months. And we've been doing our normal cleaning and plus all of the um, high touch surfaces extra well. So the school is very clean and we'll continue keeping that up. The wellness surveys that everyone gets at about 5 a.m. every morning are really, really important. Um, so please make sure that those are filled out for your children. Please make sure that it's their legal name on the form when you fill that out. That helps us check it with our system. And when your student comes through the door in the morning, we check them off the list. So you wanna make sure that it's done ahead of time before your child gets to school. We do have two entrances and exits to the building. When we first talked about these plans, we had three exits and entrances and we have uh, turned that into two. So the younger kids don't have to walk as far outside in the rain the other day, help prove that point. Um, so the elementary entrance is downstairs under um, 
the canopy near the bleachers. And then students are also dismissed out that door for elementary. The middle and high come through the main doors here on the second floor. And their temperatures are checked before they walk in and then the wellness survey is checked to make sure that it's completed. For lunchtime, the elementary is eating in their first floor classrooms. And the lunches, if they order a cafeteria lunch, are delivered down there. The students are six feet apart while they're eating because their masks are off. In the middle and high, they have assigned seats in the cafeteria. They're dismissed to get into line. Um, they're doing a really good job wearing their masks when they are not eating. For recess, the students are staying with their own grade level to try and keep um, the bubbles intact. And that seems to be going really well. We hope that the weather starts cooperating a little bit more so we can get outside. And that goes for mass breaks too. When the weather has been nice, they've been outside as much as possible for mass breaks and we'll continue that. Ms. Latin, do you wanna talk about bathrooms and hallways? And I just wanna add about lunch. Um, we're still, Figuring out, we're, we're going to probably be changing, I mean, I know some of you have contacted me about seats. Your child might be sitting alone or they're not sitting with their grade. I will be looking over the lunch um, assignments to make sure that everyone is, is possible sitting with someone and we'll fix all of that once we have a final count and everyone's been in and everything. Um, bathrooms and hallways. So we really, really, really don't want students wandering around the hallways this year and making extraneous and superfluous visits to the bathroom. Um, we really wanna keep people apart. Um, so if, if you, there shouldn't be really any students in the hallways unless they're going to the bathroom um, or they're coming to the office for something. And in the bathroom, we'd prefer to keep maybe one or two students in at, in at a time. I know at lunch, only one boy and one girl is allowed to go to the bathroom at once. Um, <clears throat> again, this is because the bathrooms, you know, we, want, we don't want the space to be crowded. Every other sink has been um, shut off so that uh, when they're washing their hands, uh, they have space, three feet of space in between them. Um, so again, we're really trying to keep those those bathrooms and on the emptier side and the hallway is nice and clear. And the hallways also have um, like lanes marking that is left and right to, to help control. And, and the kids have been very good about making sure mostly staying on the right and we've been, we've been very happy with them. And then at dismissal, the buses, buses get dismissed first and then all the grade levels kind of stagger out. Um, so that, you know, for example, once the first grade's out, then the second grade comes through. So that's been working out pretty well also. If you are picking up your students in the elementary level, we ask that you make sure that you are standing on the dots that are out there so that we can keep our distance and please wear a mask. If you are parked in the parking lot and your students are walking out, just be really careful when you are going out. We wanna make sure everyone's safe there. The buses and aftercare have special um, limits on their um, numbers. Aftercare can only take a few students right now. If we are able, we will let you know if more spaces open up. But right now, Ms. Heidi, is full downstairs and aftercare. And then the same with the buses. The buses are every other seat and then students sit sitting alone unless they have siblings. So there's a limited amount of spaces. We had to change some bus routes and things like that. So we ask for your grace and patience as we kind of adapt all these things about the school to uh, follow all the procedures that we need for this year. The um, Next thing we wanna talk about is the virtual learning. So our virtual learning is both asynchronous and synchronous. It's your choice whether you want to tune in live to the class session or if you want to watch it recorded later. The first day of virtual learning was yesterday and overall went very, very well. But we ask for your grace and patience as we navigate just the little things that we need to adjust. Yesterday, we figured out about a few things with recording and it seemed like it went really well today 
um, all the assignments and videos and chats and things like that will all go through Google Classroom and Google Meet. All the students should have their logins for that. If they don't, they need to come see either me or Ms. Latin in the office. Any virtual assignments will be posted by 10 o'clock in the morning. The place where you can see all of the assignments and when they are due, they're in the classroom stream for each of those classes, but they're also in the calendar and the to-do list. So there's a lot of places where you can make sure that you're staying organized and knowing when things are due. The teachers have instructions that they will be given to their individual classes about how to turn in assignments. It's really important for the students to make sure that they turn in the assignments in a proper place so it doesn't get misplaced and the teacher thinks that it's not turned in. So you wanna make sure that the students are following those directions. The teachers in elementary especially are prioritizing the core subjects, especially the English language arts and the math. Those will be filmed every day. The other classes will be whenever there is a lesson that the teachers doing where they need to talk to the students. So sometimes if there is not that subject that day or if it's something small like a worksheet or a YouTube video or something like that, those will be posted and there won't be like a live session for that. The resources, it depends on what they're doing. For example, in art, if they're working on a four day project, the first day may be filmed, but then the other days would not because it's just the students working on their individual projects. We do ask that any virtual learners have access to what they need. That's internet, that's any devices, including a printer, and then the typical school supplies like pens and paper and markers and things like that. Now there is one very important change to virtual learning and it happened about an hour ago. I talked to our associate superintendent from the Archdiocese on the phone and we've had some interest from families who initially chose virtual learning and have decided that they would like to switch to in-person learning. So if you would like to switch from virtual to in-person, you need to let us know by Tuesday of next week and then on Wednesday of next week would be the first day that your student would attend in person. We do have the space for everyone whenever you decide to come back. But if after a few days of virtual learning, you have decided that maybe you would like to be in person, again, let us know by Tuesday, and then Wednesday would be your first day back. Ms. Latin, would you like to talk about our discipline procedures for this year? Yes, yeah, so we have a little bit of normalcy here. These are issues that come up every year. Um, the dress code. So um, once September is over, just as a reminder, um, both boys and girls have to wear white button down shirts. Shirts should be tucked in. Boys have to wear ties. Um, girls can wear skirts or pants. I'm sorry, for high school, sorry. I'm in the high school mode, um, for high school. Um, Shoes for middle and high have to be dress shoes um, and no sneakers. We've been seeing some sneakers um, and even if they're black, they're still sneakers. So if you, you might hear me say to you, if you're a student, you got a new shoe, you got to get new shoes, it's probably because you're wearing sneakers. Um, I've also seen some facial hair and long hair. Um, so for boys, the hair can't touch your ears or your neck. So um, I've seen some very creative hairstyles uh, this year, trying to avoid that rule, but you can't have hair touching your ears or your neck, um, and hair should be somewhat normal in color, no crazy colors. Um, uh, and also I said no, no facial hair. Um, in terms of, as did I, was that, was that all, was that what you wanted me to mention, Ms. Flynn, did I miss anything? Okay, um, okay. Uh, phones. No one should have a phone where I can see it or your teacher can see it. I don't want to see a phone in during lunch. There should be no phones between classes or in class. Um, this is particularly an issue now, you know, I think we would like to avoid germs and phones are kind of germ magnets. So um, I, there shouldn't be any phones. If I see a phone, it's going to be a detention. Um, please, please, please be on time to school. Um, 
we do lock the doors at 8 30 there is we are not we don't open those doors basically for lunch missing lunches or forgotten homework or anything um, if you're not here by 8 30 plan to go virtual um, and also we we notice we just want to make sure too the elementary parents know if you're going to be dropping your child off between 8 15 and 8 30 make sure they go through the front because sometimes we lock the doors right at 8 15 and we do we go we walk away so um, we want to make sure that there's no child left standing at that door um, so make sure you drop them off at the front if you drop them off after 8 15. Um, and it's just really important that everyone's on time um, we talked a little bit about hallways already again we want to keep those hallways clear we have the markings we have arrows and so far hallways have been going pretty well um, but we just want to make sure everyone remembers that, especially during lunch, um, no one should be wandering the hallways. Um, middle and high school detention is on Thursdays from 2.30 to 3.30. Um, detentions can be given out at a discretion of a teacher or, or myself. Um, and uh, so hopefully we won't have too many of those. I know everyone will be a perfect angel this year and we won't have any detentions. Um, so, um, I think that's it for me, unless I missed something, Ms. Flynn, Mrs. Flynn. No, you're good. Ms. Flynn, okay. off to a great start. Um, <laughs> the next thing, again, a little bit of normal, is PowerSchool. So PowerSchool is our student information system, is the fancy term for it. And that is everything to do with grades and attendance and student records. So you have access to that as a parent. It's called parent access, very creatively. Um, if you need an account, there was a form linked in today's daily bulletin. A lot of you have already filled that out and you'll be receiving an email from me in the next couple of days with that information. And there is an app that you can download or you can go to a website. And what you'll see, you'll see your students' attendance records, whether they've been tardy or absent. And that goes for um, virtual students too. Attendance will be marked for them. You'll see what their current grades are in every single class, their total grade, and then you'll also see each individual assignment grade for that class. When it gets close to the time for report cards, the Power School Parent Access is closed to give teachers time to work on their grades to get them ready for report cards. So if you see that happen, it's not anything that you did, it's, it's report card time. High school has report cards four times a year. They're on a quarter system. Elementary and middle school are on a trimester system. So they'll have report cards three times a year. We also have what we call progress reports and those are halfway through those marking periods. You will get a report of how your students are doing. And what those are really for are for you to know what's going on so that there are no surprises. Now with the parent access app and things like that, hopefully, you already know how your students are doing, but it's halfway through the marking period so that if we need to make some improvement, we have time before we get to report cards. Both report cards and progress reports this year will be uh, emailed home, and they'll also be available in PowerSchool Parent Access. There will be no more paper report cards anymore. That's a change the Archdiocese made in um, because of COVID and it's, it's continuing. PowerSchool is also where you have access to your students' lunch accounts, where you can put money on their account if they buy cafeteria lunch. Those instructions are in the email that you'll get if you're setting up a new account. And I believe they've also been sent home by Mrs. Dale. And if you have any questions about PowerSchool, either Ms. Latin or I can answer them by email. If you do have an account already, everything is the same. And if you have forgotten your password because you haven't used it for a while, on the, um, the main page where you sign into PowerSchool, there is a forgot my password link that you can click on and it gets sent to you. If you have any sort of questions about anything related to school, here's our contact information. So, all school information is really now sent by email. So you really want to make sure to read your emails all the way through, all the way to the bottom. You get a daily bulletin sent by Mrs. Dale every day and it has the lunch menu, it has the word of the day, any announcements are on there. Um, for example, there's information about this the last couple of days. 
You also will receive separate emails occasionally with information. And you really, really want to make sure that you read those. The school calendar is also electronic this year. It's on our website. It's a Google calendar. So you can add it to your phone or your iPad or anything like that if you would rather do that. We do have an alert system that sends messages via email, text, and phone. We have used that a little bit to contact you about anything related to reopening of schools, but we could also use it for like a snow day. So that contact information is pulled from PowerSchool. And when you log into your PowerSchool account, there is a section where you can change your contact information if like your email changed or anything like that. All of the faculty and staff emails are in PowerSchool. So when you're looking at your student's list of classes, it has the teacher's email there. All of those emails are also on our website if ever you need to contact anyone. The typical format is first initial and last name. So I would be like jflynn at bishopwalsh.org. Because we are not allowed to have guests in the building, we'll need to start making appointments for virtual meetings. And we can do that via Google Meet or Zoom or whatever is convenient for you and also on the phone, of course. If you need to call the school for any reason, there's the phone number. Any changes to um, who's riding the bus or pick up times or anything like that, Ms. Cessna will make sure that we get that message. And then the three of us administrators have our emails there and our phone extensions if ever you need to talk to any of us we're always available. Right now I am swimming in several hundred emails that I still need to answer. So, you know, we ask your patience during this busy time, but we will make sure that we get back to you. Okay, so it's almost time to go meet the teachers. So here is the information for that. Middle and high school parents will follow your student's class schedule, which you should have. And it's about seven minute periods and then two minutes passing period. If you were here in person, you'd be walking down the hallway. Now that we're virtual, it's so you can get logged on to the next Google Meet. So there are the times for that. Elementary teachers have three sessions and it's the same session each time. And so if you have multiple children, you can, you can hit their sessions. So they're about 15 minutes long. The third elementary session is specifically for virtual learners because there's some specifics to that that are a little bit different than in-person students. So there's the schedule. To log in, you want to go to meet.google.com, click the join or start a meeting button. You'll need to use your students' accounts to log in because it's all in with, within our, our BW system. In the meeting name box, you're going to type the meeting nickname from the list on the next slide. It's basically the teacher's last name. And the teachers are going to keep that same link going throughout the evening. So it's kind of like you're walking in and out of their classrooms, only you're doing it virtually. And then Ms. Latin and I will have our own meeting links open here in about half an hour in case you have questions for us. So here are all the um, meeting link nicknames. Again, it's all last names, except we have two falters on staff now. So it's C falter and M falter. And if you have any questions or anything, again, Ms. Latin and I will be available to answer them at about 7.30. Okay, so we're gonna let you go. Enjoy your evening, talk to the teachers, and we wish everyone a great school year, and we are so glad to be back and to see all your uh, children, either virtually or in person, and we know it's gonna be a great school year. All right, we're gonna go ahead and shut this down and go ahead and talk to the teachers. Have a good night. <laughs>